<laughs> Very good. <laughs> that is really <laughs> dog and fox. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> G'day again, extension two. Thought I would spoil you again with some fresh integrals before we get stuck into them. Here is a flashback question again from our proof topic. I want you to try and use a contrapositive, if you can remember what that is, to show that if n minus three squared is an even number, uh, then n is odd. Okay, pause the video, see if you can figure it out. Okay, so our statement is, if n minus three squared is even, this implies that n is odd. The contrapositive of that statement is, so if, if you have a implies b, the contrapositive is not B implies not A. Okay, so we're turning it around and taking the opposite. So the contrapositive of our statement is going to be if N is even, this implies that N minus 3 squared is odd. Okay, and that is much easier to show. And if we prove that that is true, uh, the contrapositive and the original always have the same truth value. So if you can prove one, you've proven the other. So here's how we do it. There is our contrapositive statement. We'll write n as an even number, which means it's a it's a multiple of two. And then we can sub that into n minus three. This point we're squaring it, so we're squaring 2k minus three using a perfect square expansion. We get 4k squared minus 12k plus nine. We can write the plus nine as plus eight plus one. So now we can factor a two out of these three terms. And now we have written n minus 3 squared as 2 times a number, 2 times something, plus 1, which is the definition of an odd number. Okay, make note of this because a lot of you guys in my class are quite good at these, but your setup and your, uh, your correct proof writing, I suppose you could call it, can be improved. So make sure that yours looks something like this because we do have to be a bit pedantic with this topic for it to be a proper correct full marks proof, all right? So just be aware. All right, so today we are looking at a method of integration which involves splitting the numerator of a fraction. Okay, this stuff is uh, is really useful, but I would say it's quite tricky at first. I definitely found these uh, pretty difficult on my first run through this course. So it might take you a bit of practice before you feel confident with these techniques. Okay, I'll try and go as slow as I can. As always, let me know if you have questions. Okay, here is our first one. We are going to integrate, start off with a relatively simple example. We are integrating x divided by x minus one. All right, so if this was just a constant up top, it'd be a piece of cake, because we could just use a logarithm, but the top and the bottom are the same uh, degree, I guess you could say, they're both linear terms. The really clever way of writing this integral so we can split it apart into something that is more uh, friendly to integrate I would say okay here's how we do it we write x minus 1 plus 1 all right if I've added minus 1 plus 1 I've really added 0 haven't I so the top line is technically still the same this just looks more complicated but now what we can do hence the title we can split the numerator we can write this as two separate fractions x minus 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. Okay, and straight away that's right, that's, uh, sorry, that's way better because x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is of course 1. And now we can integrate because this is now something we can do with a logarithm because the top is the derivative of the bottom. So we can integrate 1 to x, we can integrate 1 over x minus 1 to ln of x minus 1 plus your constant and you're done. So that's how you do it. You just need to be really clever and think of a convenient way of writing the numerator so you can split it up into stuff that's gonna be canceling or integrating really nicely. Is basically the moral of today's story. Here is our next one. We are integrating x squared over x minus one. So with the last one, the top and bottom were the same degree, both degree one. Now with this one, the top is a degree higher than the bottom. Okay, it's a little bit more tricky. All right, here's how we're gonna do it. We are going to write the top as x multiplied with x minus one. But that doesn't quite work, does it? Because if we expanded this, 
we would have x times x, which would be x squared, and we'd have x times minus 1, which would give us minus x. So I'm going from this top line to the second line, I've actually added in a negative x to the numerator. So to keep the balance the same, I'm going to do plus x. All right, now these two are the same. Now this is an equals because if I did x squared minus x plus x, I would get x squared. The reason I need to do an x minus 1 in here is because, well, there's an x minus 1 on the bottom and we're hopefully going to cancel that off eventually. Okay, so now that we've done that, that's, that's the really clever part that's harder to see. Now you split the numerator into two fractions. Now on this left hand one, you have x minus 1 over x minus 1. So these guys are going to divide away and you're going to be left with x. Okay, and on the right, we've got the x minus, oh, sorry, we've got the x over x minus 1 which we just handled in the last question. We can do a minus one plus one on the top. And so we can split that one apart as well. Okay, so we're writing minus one plus one on the top, splitting it apart, just like we did in the last question. Now the rings all split apart. We've got divide away, divide away, and we're left with this. Okay, now that we've got that far, we can integrate x, we can integrate 1, and we can integrate 1 over x, oh, sorry, 1 over x minus 1, and here's what we get. Uh, yeah, worth pointing out that um, if you find this jump from this top line here to this last line here, if you find this working out very confusing, you are not alone. It is hard to spot at first, like I said, it is a, a method that takes some getting used to. If you don't really like this, there is another option that some of my students previously have preferred. You can use long division. Okay, x squared over x minus 1 is the same thing as x squared divided by x minus 1. So if you want to express this in another way, you can use long division from polynomials. Okay, right here I've done, so I start off with x squared divided by x minus 1, put in a few zeros just to keep all the space like we used to do. And now do your long division, and if you've done it properly, you'll end up with x squared equal to x minus 1, x plus 1, plus 1. Okay, because you had, uh, you were dividing this by this. Here is your quotient and here is your remainder. Okay, polynomial, divisor, quotient, remainder. Now you can take this and you can divide both sides by x minus 1 and you get x squared over x minus 1, divides away here and you get 1 over x minus 1. So this is an alternative way of going from this top line to this bottom line using long division. Okay, so some people prefer this. I'm gonna let you make your choice. And if you want some more help using this method, I can show you guys later, all right? Either way, we get to this point, which is where the point we can actually start doing some integrating. We can go x goes to x squared over two, one goes to x, and one over x minus one, again, goes to ln x minus one, plus your constant. Okay, there's your answer. We can move on to the next one. All right, on to the next one. We have this time, both the top and the bottom are a polynomial of the same degree, which does change things slightly, but our approach is going to be pretty similar. We're going to try and see a, a clever way of splitting apart this fraction, okay? So here is our approach. Here's our first step. We are going to write as much as we can. We are, we are trying to replicate the bottom of the fraction again, okay? So I'm going to put this plus 2. I'm going to write as a plus 1 and a plus 1. So I have x squared plus 1 on top and bottom. That's going to be convenient because now when I split it apart, I'll be able to have an x, x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1, which is going to be great. All right. So splitting apart, we now have three integrals. This one is going to be a piece of cake. It's just one. I want you to look at these two and think, how would I integrate these two fractions? Because they can be done. Okay. If you said to yourself, I can apply a logarithm here, that is correct because you can write a 2x up here and now the top is the derivative of the bottom. And if you looked at this and said this looks like inverse tan, that again is correct. Okay, so a very small difference that drastically changes the question. Okay, this is an advanced level question. This is extension one and putting it all together is extension two. So there you go. So we can write this as one and then we can integrate like there's no tomorrow. We can go x, we can go half ln x squared plus 1, okay, because we're putting a 2 up top, so we're half at the front. Hopefully you can see that. And we're doing inverse 10 on the end, 
and plussing our constant. And there it is. That is a really good question because you have to start off with your extension two technique and then recognize the different integrals. Okay, putting it all together. Okay, for our next one, our second last one, this one we have an x squared up top and an x, or just a single x on the bottom. So we're gonna use our technique from earlier where we're gonna try and put as many x minus twos as we can in the top line, okay? Or again, option B is you can do log division, but I'm gonna show you both ways just to give you as many options as I can. Here's what I would do first. I would write this x squared as x times x minus two. Okay, I'm trying to put an x minus two on the top so I can cancel it off eventually. So what I've got here is x squared minus two x. All right, so if I've got a minus two x here and I need to end up with a five x, which is where I started, I need to have a seven x here. Okay, don't write that yet though. x squared minus 2x plus 7x gets me this. Okay, but again, I don't want 7 times x. I want 7 times x minus 2 if I'm looking even further ahead. Okay, it's all about trying to see the end goal. So if I've written this as 7x minus 2, what I've got here is I've got the, well, I've got the 5x all up here, but this would be a 7x and this would be minus 14. So if I've got a constant of minus 14 floating around, but I need it to be a one, because that's what I'm starting off with, yeah? What needs to go here? We need to have a 15, okay? Because when I do seven times minus two, I get minus 14, and then minus 14 plus 15 is one, okay? So what we've done here is we've written the top line. This is the exact same thing, okay? The top lines are the exact same thing, but now I've got these x minus twos that when I split apart everything, it's gonna vanish and it's gonna make everything easier, okay? That is the only hard part, going from here to here and being able to set this up, okay? It's a skill, it takes practice. So we split apart the integral. Uh, the x minus twos are all gonna vanish off from these two fractions, so we get these, okay, from this line, vanishing away, and now we can integrate everything. So x goes to x squared on two, seven goes to, can you just pretend for me that's a seven x because I can't be bothered edit, editing this, that's a seven x. And we've got 15 times ln of x minus two plus c. Okay, nailed it. And for the last one, this time we have a degree three on top and a degree one on the bottom. If you feel like you're getting this, you can pause and have a go, but it is, it's, a, it's the same process that we've done before, but a little bit more work. So let's have a look. So our first line, again, we're trying to put in as many x squared plus ones as we can. So I've got x squared times x plus one. So what's happening here is I've got x squared times x is x cubed, but now I've got this artificial x squared times one. So I've got an extra x squared where before I had nothing. So how are you gonna fix that? You're gonna take away x squared. Okay, now the top lines are the same, pardon me. This line and this line are the same thing, just written in a sort of a clever way, I guess. And now again, rather than writing x squared, we're gonna write x times x plus one. Okay, matchy, 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 it's all nice. So here I've got a negative x squared and I've got a negative x, and I shouldn't have any x's on the top, as you can see, so I need to add an x to get rid of it. Okay. Now this all, if you expand and collect everything, you do get x cubed, but again, we don't want x, we want x plus one. So we're gonna do x plus one minus one, okay? So we had to do it three times. What we've got now, we've got, uh, we've got three, or I guess four separate terms really, where three of them have x plus ones that are gonna vanish away. Everything's gonna look super duper nice. Splitting it all apart. We divide these, we divide these, we divide these to get lots of ones. And this one on the end, we can just use a logarithm once again. So we end up with this, okay? Once again, if you find this uh, really daunting at first and you just don't like the setup, your plan B is you can use uh, long division again. So we did x cubed divided by x plus one, go through your process and you end up with x squared minus x plus one, which is that and you've got your remainder of minus one, and so you do your remainder 
over your divisor like I did before, okay? Hopefully either one or both of these methods make sense and you can get to this line here, which is now you can actually start doing some calculus and get your answer. So x squared turns into x cubed on three, minus x squared on two, turns into an x, and we have minus ln x plus one. Don't forget your constant, and that's all there really is to it. Okay, if that all makes sense, or maybe you wanna give it another watch for it to sink in, that's fine. Some of this stuff does need that. If it does make sense, you can move on to exercise 4.3 out of Howard Mathematics. I will ask that you skip these three questions for now. We'll be doing more stuff on them next week. All right, thanks heaps for watching. Uh, just like last week, we're gonna do a bit of a riddle. So from last week's one, well, it wasn't last week, it was two days ago, but well done if anyone figured out it is the four musketeers. Musketeer one, two, three, four. All right, new one for today. Here's your puzzle. As always, jump in the comments if you think you know it. And if you're right, you will earn my heart and respect. All right, cheers guys, I'll see you next time.